Hi, Trevor here, reflecting on live stream music. Thank you for stopping by. Well, coming again today, you're very, very welcome. How great to see everybody here. I trust you enjoyed my last video on the Elliot Orchestra, Genius, Jeff Lynn, Traveling Wilbury's production credits, all the rest of it. And you know, what typified his story was when I was a boy, which came off the Alone in the Universe album, and the, just the incredible gift he's brought to the world through all of those bands. So I trust you found that one encouraging. One of my heroes, if I could have three people for dinner, he would be one of them. So good to be able to look at him in his solo right. We're going from there, Toronto, 1988. Um, Ed, Ed Robertson and Steve Page met and they decided let's do a bit of a thing and soon Jim and Andy Cregan and Tyler Stewart joined them to, to form the Bare Naked Ladies. Now, just take note of that word naked because they have been known in recording studios to record one of the tracks of their albums, Naked. So... <laughs> So there we go. You might be thinking, I see that name flash up on the TV. You see it flash up on the TV a lot. So we're going to get on to the particular sitcom that uh, these guys are so thankful they wrote the theme song for. Um, but before that, they came out with an independent release in 1991. And that was the first album, independent release in Canada, to be certified gold. So it wasn't long for the world to realise that um, these guys were a bit of a thing. Already incredible musicians. They have just a real playful look at life. Often their lines, if there's a lot of words in their songs sometimes, but they just like tell stories so, so well. They add a bit of mystery and a bit of whatever in there. It makes the Bare Naked Ladies extremely, extremely talented indeed. Out in uh, 1992, out came the release of Gordon, and off that album we've got If I Had One Million Dollars. Live album, live version of this one, absolutely. Who wouldn't want one million dollars? If I Had One Million Dollars, well, he talks about buying a house for his girl and furniture for his girl and all the rest of the stuff he does. Obviously, love does not need money, but, you know, if you have got some, it helps just a little bit. <laughs> so we've got If I Had a Million Dollars, live version of that one. Out in 1994, we had the album Maybe You Should Drive. <laughs> what a great album title that one is. I've got the official clip of Jane very much um, falling in love and working out who somebody is. Official clip of that one. These guys are just really, really good fun. And um, they're just a bit of bring of humour to the world and but also incredible musicianship at the same time. 1996, Born on a Pirate Ship. We've got a live version of The Old Apartment. Hey, you painted the walls a different colour. Uh, the lawns are different. Everything's just a bit different to what it was when we used to be there together. Uh, a bit of a reminisce, a bit of a thing about memories. And we know how important memories are um, because of the, we need them going forward. If something finishes, we cling to those memories well and truly. So make them while you've got the opportunity Born on a Pirate Ship, the old apartment live version of that one. Out in 1998, we had the album Stunt. This was absolutely massive um, album for these guys. The album went number three on the chart, sold four million copies, so very, very significant. And a song I do actually remember from the Bare Naked Ladies, one week this song went to actually number one, so very, very significant indeed. The single sold five million copies, and so... We've got an official clip of one week. You know, as you can see, there's a bit of, um, when you're with a label, you can actually do really, really incredible film clips and video clips. And so these guys really make the most of it when they get an opportunity. So we've got one week official. But the world changed for these guys in 2010 when they wrote the theme song to The Big Bang Theory. Now, every I'm not sure what the deal is, uh, but... Normally, every time um, a song is played anywhere, there's royalties. And if you think about the Big Bang Theory, eleven seasons all around the world, and all of the all of the you know the reruns of the Big Bang Theory is just one of these shows that's had a bit of an enduring legacy to it. Of course, it followed the um, the exploits of Sheldon Cooper, um, who was just really quite out there in many, many ways, but he was tolerated, as he said, in that final episode where they got the Nobel Prize by uh, by Penny. And it was, Big Bang Theory was very much a relationship between 
Penny and Sheldon. Of course, we've got Leonard, Ed, Leonard, and um, a few other guys there. So a pretty, pretty significant share on the scheme of things. A show about nerds. Nerds became quite cool after that one. Big Bang Theory. Here we go. We're gonna we're gonna sort of go into contentious territory here because um, there is there are two theories. Well, there's more than two theories, but the two predominant theories around how the world actually started. We've got we've got um, evolution, where it's like it all started, as this song suggests, with the Big Bang, and then all the rest of the things that happened after that. And then we've got creation, which implies there's a bit more of an intelligent design behind the world than just a Big Bang. Now, if you know, if you've watched this channel a little, a little bit in the past, you kind of know which side of the coin I lie on here, and that's creation. But just hang with on me with a little bit. The reason I say that, well, because what? How is it that gravity is big enough for us to be held onto the ground, but not big enough for a bird to stop a bird from flying? How is it that the moon goes around the earth every 28 days? Now, all the scientists out there, I might get some of these days exactly wrong. Um, how is it that the earth goes around the sun every 365 and a quarter? Don't forget the leap year and a bit. The bit is adjusted in Greenwich, Greenwich uh, the Greenwich clock every now and then. Why is time important? Because it's the thing that gives us longitude when we're doing our navigation. So 365 and a quarter and a bit days per year. Think about the fact that uh, trees actually um, breathe in our carbon dioxide and turn it into oxygen and that's a pretty amazing filtration system right there. Think about the fact that some things can only survive in salt water. Uh, thank goodness for that because most of our planet is salt water and some things only fresh water. Think about rainforests. Well, that those that are actually left on this planet uh, um, how they have the, the, the undergrowth at the bottom and they're supported by canopy at the top and animals and things all at all levels of that. And whales, one of the biggest um, mammals in the world, is one of the smallest mammals in the world, krill, because there's just so much of it around. There's just too much about our design, you know. Um, you know, the food chain and how the food chain operates. Think about flies, in fact, and how they clean up after human beings. Think about spiders, how they clean up um, a lot of things. Think about bees and how they pollinate flowers to bring life to this world. Um, and even something as beautiful as a waterfall, really, all a waterfall is, is just, you know, we've got a river and it's got this bit of a gap to go through and it just falls down to the next bit. You know, the world is a beautiful, beautiful place and it just seems to me a little bit more behind it than just an accident. And the fact that we, you know, at this point of, of, of our knowledge, we're the only planet in the whole of the known universe to support life. So think about the fact that you are breathing um, on the only planet that we know of at this point to actually be able to sustain, sustain life is pretty, pretty amazing. And it's a pretty, pretty privileged place to be in. Um, to actually be in a situation like that. So there's just so much about the world um, that is not, not an accident, it would seem. And then science comes along and it actually, in a sense, um, investigates how the world works and investigates how this creative um, thing actually works. And science has got a lot to be thankful for, for, for actually giving us knowledge about this world that we live in. Even if you think about how life is created, you know, um, it's created in love. It's created when a man and a woman, in case of human beings, comes together. And, you know, the sperm's got to fight through many, many layers <laughs> to get to that egg. But it gets there eventually. And, you know, this is how life is created. Um, and it's, you know, how incredible for women um, to be the ones that bear children. And we should always remember that. <laughs> Where in the human race, if it wasn't for women, we wouldn't have a human race. And we wanted for women being able to give birth the way they do. It's absolutely amazing. And, and apparently, in the first um, minute of life, you know, that first cry is just so important. A hole closes hope over in the heart. And there's all sorts of things that happen in that first minute. And then the child grows up and, and learns what it needs to learn. So there's just too much... Um, creativity in this world to see it as an accident I'm thinking but go back to evolution for a second and that is that like there is an evolutionary process at play 
No, we can't just, no, it wasn't like the world was created um, and that was it. No, the Bible actually says that um, on the seventh day, God rested. Now, the first six days, uh, there was an evening and a morning. We're getting a bit theological here, but on the seventh day, that wasn't. The seventh was declared a day of rest. Now, maybe that's the way our life is meant to be. It's kind of got this restful attitude about it in this um, in this chaotic world that we live in. But I, it's almost like, you know, the world moves and changes. Think about the weather patterns. Think about climate. Think about the seasons. You know, I think about summer. That's when all the leaves fall off. Then after summer, if I get my, my facts right here, we have um, spring when new growth and new birth happens. Um, actually, no, I've got around. Summer is when all the leaves are on the trees, you know, providing us with shade. Autumn is when the leaves change colour and they're just about to fall off, those that, are ever, that, those that aren't evergreen. We go to winter, the leaves are off the tree, but the tree is storing up water ready to bring new growth in spring. It's just too much of an act, too much of a design to think it could be an accident. But, you know, evolutionary speaking, the seasons um, just keep going. No, we used to die of the common cold. We don't anymore. Um, I'm sure that COVID will become one of those things that we just think about and think, well, we got over that as well. Um, there's too much of an evolutionary process of change and growth in this world as well. Earthquakes. You know, the earth does move. It does move. And people who've been through earthquakes, horrible earthquakes, it's really, really, um, it can be a really, a really, really sad thing. Volcanoes is like the, the Earth's release valve. So there's a lot about, and the Earth, the Earth spins on its axis. It just spins. So, you know, we see sun for half the day and moon for the other half of the day. And just think about the fact that the, the sun, so far away that it is, is actually giving us heat and power. The moon has actually taken a lot of the meteorites that are aimed for Earth. The moon has taken them instead. So like, almost like our defense mechanism. So within this creative work, I'm going to call it a work, and for me, I believe creation um, is made by the ultimate creator, and that is God in heaven. If you don't think that, that's fine, but I suppose, you know, we've got to put out what we believe sometimes. But there's an evolutionary process, a, a, pro, a process of change, a process of growth, a process of, of just the moving and shaking of this earth. And so... Um, and even um, even in the Big Bang Theory song, and we've got official and live version of that one below, there are all these things that we have done in the beginning and then all the things that have happened since then, like all the things that we that mankind has done. Good things mankind has done. Mankind also is capable of not doing such good things, which is a bit of a shame, but we are pretty incredible human race. If we could only just learn to get on with each other a bit better, it would be good. So evolution versus creation, perhaps there's a little bit of both in there, absolutely. I'm not sitting on the fence, by the way. Um, creation at the start, absolutely, but evolutionary capabilities and attributes as we go from that time onwards. So um, Bare Naked Ladies, a great name for a band. <laughs> two Billboard Music Awards, two Grammy nominations. There's been seven Juno Awards, which is Canada. Um, and they've actually had quite a few nominations in Canada and quite concluding at the start, I think there have been like four nominations in the first couple of years, so pretty, pretty significant. In 2018, they were inducted into the Canada Music Hall of Fame and we got a bit of a reunion um, clip there. Uh, if I Had a Million Dollars and another song, I think One Week is in there. So we've got a live clip of that one. Great to see the guys come back. And then we've got um, the guy from Rush in inducting them into the Canadian Music Hall of Fame in 2018, some 30 years after these guys started. Um, they've sold between 1992 and 2023 14 studio albums, three live albums, four compilation albums, six video albums, 39 music videos, 41 singles, estimated to have sold 15 million albums. So definitely more than one one hit wonder even though they wrote you know one of the greatest uh, sitcom songs of all time really big bang theory um uh you know there's been a lot more to these guys than just that and to be inducted into the canadian music hall of fame 
is pretty, pretty cool. So the links to those eight clips are in the description below. And I've also included my last video from ELO, ELO genius, Jeff Lynn. So if you want to recap on him, feel free. Well, if this is your first time, the live reflection stream is you're thinking, what on earth am I listening here to? Just go back to my playlist and see what we cover. Or you can come back for another one. Thank you for, thank you for your loyalty to this channel. Um, so that's it for today. Next time we're going to go on to Kahneman's call. So until then, I'll catch you around. Bye for now.